Hello there, members of my flock. The Bad Raven here. Uh, we decided to do uh, a, I guess, best of Halloween series here before Halloween comes out. And we're going to do all of the ones in the set from uh, the original Halloween all the way to the god-awful Halloween 2 Rob Zombie ones. I can't help it. The last ones were horrible. But we're going to do put out one a day before Halloween, and that way you can get a, the whole Halloween experience before Halloween starts. Just look forward to each one of these installments on my channel. I'm, I've opened up a new channel on Vidme also, if you want to catch my videos over there too. I'm going to put them on both places, both platforms, so my fans can find them. Without further ado, I like to say, I want to start out with the most famous, the most perfect m movie that's ever come out for horror fans, that is Halloween. Halloween. That's the front. Uh, yeah, that's the spine. That's the back. We also got, I think it's the, the TV cut and the theatrical cut on the inside. This is from my like 15 disc set I also have a, an older version of it when I first got uh, my Blu-rays and stuff. This was the one that came out, and uh, it was one of the first that I got to buy. So that's this one. I'm going to show you everything about it. And just the theatrical cut on this one. Still like both, both copies have. But as I was saying... Who directed, who directed Halloween? Let me think. Oh, yeah. It's a little known director known as John Carpenter. And you know I'm being crazy with you here. I know it's John Carpenter, and he is not little known. That's for sure. He's well known in the horror field and in other directing fields. Uh, I really think his, his movies, he does a superb job. He definitely brought this movie to life. This came out in 1978. And of course, John Carpenter directed it, and he wrote he wrote a screenplay with Deborah Hill. And the stars of this uh, movie are, of course, Donald Pleasant as Doctor Loomis. We all love Doctor Loomis. Doctor Loomis is uh, the uh, the mental health uh, doctor for young Michael after he kills kills his sister and decides to keep him in the same asylum. For pretty much his whole life. He was an excellent choice as picking him as it. Then you got the great Jamie Lee Curtis. I mean, if she's not in this movie, like with Donald Pleasant, it's just not going to be that good a movie. It's just going to be a sure run of mill slasher movie, which this is kind of the dawn of the slasher movies with, with this movie that John Carpenter came out with. It took off from there. Pretty much Friday the 13th stole parts of it. To be able to make their series. Like I said, Jamie Lee Curtis plays uh, Laurie Strode in this one. She very, you know, she's the daughter of uh, uh, Janet Lee from the original Psycho series. Uh, you know, Anthony Perkins version, you know, Psycho, the original. Alfred Hitchcock, for you young people out there. She became to be known as the Scream Queen after all these movies. This is just one of the first scary movie she was in, and the reason she was cast was probably for her mom and her acting ability, of course, too. So going on, we have Nancy Keys as Annie, and then you got PJ Souls as Linda, and she does an excellent job as Linda. All right, let's go back to the movie now. Um, I remember back when this movie came out, I was very, very young, so this is like fleeting memories of what I remember of it. I just remember my sisters coming back from the drive-in and they were talking about the boogeyman. And I was a little kid, you know, the boogie, anything about the boogeyman would scare me to death. So when they come back talking about the boogeyman to get you, I was freaked plumb out. So I, it was probably at least years after that before I actually got to watch the movie on cable or something. I think, I think it's the first time I ever watched it was on cable television, so it was cut all to pieces. But still, it was a scary movie to me. Now, we recently went back a couple years ago. My local theater was playing for Halloween, the original. 
And when we watched it again on the big screen, which I never really ever seen it on the big screen until then, it was kind of funny. I mean, there was actually some laughs and chuckles in the movie from some of the kills because really the kills weren't as graphic as your mind made them out to be. Some of them was quite comical with the strangulation in the car. <laughs> I think the crowd just kind of la laughed at that. And they just, you know, it wasn't as scary back when I was a child, I guess. Cause with all the stuff that came out, it's coming out now, I mean, anything that they put out in the older days like that, it, you go back and watch them and you're like, wow, that scared me. But at the time, I was a kid, so it would. But anyway, they, uh, the story uh, starts out, of course, with young Michael. Now, this is going to be a spoiler review because if you haven't seen the original Halloween by now, you're, you know, don't, just turn off the video if you don't want to see, don't want to hear what I have to say about the movie because it's definitely going to have spoilers in it. It's set back, like a 63, I think they say. Let's see. Yeah, 1963 when uh, the little Michael Myers... Uh, starts his psychotic ways of uh, he kills his, his sister. So you get the very that's a very cool way they do the intro of the movie. It's through Michael's eyes, and that was revolutionary back in the day because all the other types of movies, you know, you saw the killings go on from a third person perspective, but this one they really took you into the eyes of the killer, and you get to see his rampage on his sister and getting caught, of course. So they, uh, the family ships him off to uh, an insane asylum, and that's where Dr. Loomis comes in, played Donald, by Donald Pleasance, the, the, the late Donald Pleasance. Uh, extraordinary, extraordinary actor, extraordinary. Uh, he was in the stage and, and film and character actor, all that. I mean, he just, he just totally took this role and, and made it. You know, nobody else, Dr. Loomis, is believable. You know? <laughs> and... Uh, Malcolm McDowell, uh, but uh, it shows you that you you got to have what it takes to do that, and he did, but getting on with the story, he is the doctor for young Michael, and he decides that all he can see behind Michael's eyes is pure evil, and he decides to keep him locked up in the same asylum for the rest of his life because he knows what's behind there will be nothing good come out of it. But like any horror film happens, the you know, goes on, he gets out. After all these years being in this place, evidently he lives pretty close to where he was put in the insane asylum in Hattonfield. So he hops in a truck, or in, well not a truck, he hops in a vehicle from the that Dr. Loomis was in that he takes over and drives. He's a good driver for somebody who never drove a vehicle before since he's been in in the big house, I guess, or the nut house for that long, he <laughs> he gets in it and spins away and drives like he drove in stunt stunt work for the rest of his life. But we all won't nitpick at that kind of stuff because I still love this movie. That's just uh, observation. He gets back to Hattonfield, kills a few people, gets a mask from the store, and it's on. And it's really cool, the mask he gets. It's, it's an old uh, William Shatner mask from Star Trek, but in the movie it's not, but that's what they used. They actually went and tried different uh, masks on him. I think they tried a clown mask, and then they tried, and then they got this one, and they cut the eye holes out, made them bigger, bleached the, the mask white, and made the hair orange looking, and they come up with the Michael Myers look. So... That is iconic. And in later movies, after part two, they totally screw up the mask. The mask is not used properly. They use clown-looking masks. They use weird-looking masks that make him look like a clown. They're not exactly clown masks. So I didn't really like the mask in the other, the other movies. So he's running around and following people. And he's pretty obvious he's following people. It's like they look up and they're like he's in the background like... And it doesn't look funny to people that, you know, this guy with this Halloween mask just driving a car. But you're supposed to suspend disbelief, I understand. But after he, he drives around town cruising, cruising in the, the psycho mobile, he <laughs> finds the lorry and uh, just pretty much parks his car pretty much outside the door of the house and <laughs> decides to, you know, 
terrorize her. We don't know why at this junction why he's terrorizing poor uh, Lori Strode, by, played by uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. But he is. He is uh, terrorizing her. You get a several different pretty cool scenes with him lurking in the background. And see, stuff like that it can be really kind of a suspense building, atmosphere building, uh, scary type movie. That's what some scary movies miss. They always wanted to jump out and scare everybody, but a lot of his was built, a lot of John Carpenter's uh, part of this movie is the way he directed it was built on suspense, of course. And and Michael Myers is kind of like the great white shark in Jaws. He's just like, you know, floating around, waiting to make a kill, He'd like to come in there and kill people. Well, he pretty much dispatches there with everyone. I ain't going to go into great detail of what he does, but he has some really cool scenes in there, cool kill scenes. And not a lot of blood, but, you know, enough to get you scared as a child or, or a young adult. And they end up, uh, he chases uh, poor Lori back to her place, or her place where she's babysitting at. And this was originally going to be called the Babysitter Diaries, or the Babysitter Diaries, or the uh, something with Babysitter in the title. But they changed it to Halloween. Thank God, because uh, I don't know if I would have been such a hit the other way. A title can change a movie. Anyway, he chases her down, gets in the, and I like the way he, when he gets killed or whatever, and he just like raises up like he's doing a setup. I mean, just really cool. I, don't, I couldn't even do it right now. I'd probably break my back. But he just like gets up, and he just goes through doors like head first. Doesn't like to use the, the knob too much, you know, but you, you see more of that in part two. But you, uh, it does, it has a really cool ending, and it opens up for the sequel, of course, when he gets shot off the balcony. But <laughs> all in all, the, the movie for the low budget it was at the time, I forget how much they made it for. Maybe I'll post it here, what the actual budget of the movie was. But it made tons and tons of money. So they good that they left the door open for a sequel, even though John Carper didn't direct the sequel. He did have some parts to do with the movie as far as producing and stuff. He left it open. He was smart enough to leave it open to where, uh, to open up for more sequels to be made and you know that the rest is history the rest is history for halloween and it'll always be the staple of the halloween season to watch and that's the reason i wanted to do this review for my flock members because halloween's coming up and i want you to be in the halloween mood there's no better way to get in the halloween mood to watch one of these copies of this movie or it doesn't matter the same copy so you will get that trick-or-treat on and be able to have the the kids uh uh, ready and hyped so I just wanted to make this review and remember I'm gonna post the other movies as uh, the get closer to getting to the actual Halloween date so look back and watch try to point one out daily so you can be able to watch them so just remember the bad raven is your friend and we are always looking out for good reviews for you to be able to tell you about movies and so you can go and watch them so we'll let you go and goodbye